What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. In this video we're going to look at more updates to Revit 2023, but specifically looking at Dynamo. Dynamo has new updates. And if you, at any point in this video you happen to learn something, which I mean, come on, hope you do, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps me out a lot. Okay, looking at Dynamo. What's new? Well, version 2.13, 2.13 now ships with Revit 23. I guess that you know makes a little more sense. So that's nice. And the biggest thing I'll say right now, the biggest thing we'll see is visual updates, which <laughs> oddly is quite appealing to me because I'm a very visual person and I like, let's say, dark mode. That's a bit of a preview to what we're going to see here. But if we look, this is literally me opening Dynamo version 2.13 in Revit 2023 right now. And we can see, obviously, here's some new features. And we're going to go over more of them, but just we're looking at the pop-up here. Obviously, Dynamo node autocomplete. We're, we're, we are familiar with that. And so we can search things that would help us autocomplete a specific node input or output, which is really nice. And we can start to see some of the dark mode in here. Now, the rest of this isn't quite up to date <laughs> as to what we can expect to see in the new Dynamo. But let's go ahead and close this. And just for grins, I'm going to open up one of my scripts and see what happens. And we can start to see some of the new visual updates. First of all, we got a new tab up here. You know, we've always seen tabs in Dynamo, but we have not necessarily seen uh, the, had the ability to open multiple scripts at the same time. Now that's a bit different now. So we can clearly see an updated UI. I think a lot is here. Not only is a lot here, but it looks new. It's darker. It's cool. Nice. Um, but I actually want to jump to the Dynamo website to look at the latest updates. And we'll actually come back to what Dynamo looks like on my side here because, it, I mean, it's it's kind of nuts. All right, and this is Dynamo Core 2.13, which is, you know, same update, 2.13. Uh, this is part one of three, so there's a lot here. And obviously, this came out a little bit ago, but we have multiple parts that have come out. And so we're going to go through all of those just pretty quickly about what's new here. <laughs> and we can see clearly the UI, the update, user interface just in general. We've seen that before. Like The nodes look different. Like They're actually more helpful. The icons are a little bigger. Uh, we have the use of tabs, their color, which is really great easy export of images, really great. I mean, we like to see this kind of thing. And then again, the nodes themselves are different. They, you can see <laughs> their dark mode, which is great. Um, we see the actual levels here. We've got colors to introduce whether input is coming in or not, like actually you have something connected or not. Really good stuff here. Um, obviously more dark mode. Um, really, really good to see this stuff. Just the shapes of the nodes, things like that. Um, preview is easy to turn on and off there, just like before. And you can see here, instead of like showing that it's like renamed in quotations or uh, parentheses, you can see here that there's a little dot, and then it's it says here it's renamed from this actual node. So you can say, you can actually see what the node was, as opposed to just knowing that it was renamed. <laughs> That's helpful, but not quite helpful enough. And then we get into like some errors and warnings. This is really great because normally the nodes we're used to seeing are like big red whatever errors, which it all works the same, it's fine, but we've got these red bars, these orange bars at the bottom that denote errors or warnings, things like that. And we can even learn more on the warnings and dismiss them, you know, things like that. We we have more functionality, even though it's kind of the same looking thing, just, you know, and now it just appears different, which is nice. Enhancing the graph experience. This is really cool. Groups. Now, we love groups, and we love groups because we need to organize our nodes in a way that someone else might be able to understand what the graph is actually trying to, to explain. And so in this case, we not only have parents, but child or nested groups, which is really cool. Of course, we can change the colors and all this that we're used to seeing before, um, but we have, it can get a little more compact in this. And so we can do this. We can see, look at this. This is really interesting. You, you even, there's another group in here, but you can't even see it. You just see an input and output. And so in a way, it's kind of like a custom node in a way, except it's a group, which I think is really cool because there's a lot of nodes behind the scenes working in this group, whereas with a custom node, it's a completely separate script. So nice to see that kind of a thing. And so this is the most interesting thing, I think, of this update because it's introducing like wire and annotation updates, specifically the wire. You can actually interact with the wires. So not only are we you know, normally used to interacting with these nodes, but specifically this, all these wires, can, you can interact with them. You can pin them. Uh, you can even like 
preview them is, is in see what data is being passed through. So normally you'd have to see the output of a, of like an actual node, like come over here to this geometry translate and see what is coming out of it. But what's coming out of it is going to be different than what is going in. Obviously, um, I could come over here and see, you know, I wherever this is coming from the, these polygon geometries, I can go back and trace back. But now I don't even have to do that. I can I can basically work on this single geometry translate node and highlight over these wires and interact with them in a way where I can see the input coming in. Really great stuff. This is, that's exciting. Not only that, I can break the connection this way. I can select them and break it. That's, we've seen that in other types of programs, but not Dynamo. Uh, but then this is a great feature that I really enjoy in Grasshopper. And that is the fact you can have wireless <laughs> nodes and they're all still connected, but you just can't see it. But now we can actually hide the wire. In other words, we can get a little wireless looking deal, which is really cool. Really good to see that. Uh, that will do it for the uh, part one. Let's move on to part two. Scrolling up to the top, we can see here that they've restyled the package uh, consumption workflow. That's fine. This is all the same. Basically, you're going to see the same information, except if you've added packages before, which I'm sure you have if you've used Dynamo. It's kind of a pain to use the search and it's not always happy enough to give you enough information, but then we have an entire like package details here that expands from the actual package window, which is really good. Normally it's this compact mess, but now it's a little more easier to read, which is nice. And if you make your own custom packages, again, you're just seeing most of the same things that you're used to seeing here whenever you make a custom node. Uh, but now it looks a bit better and it's a little less clunky, those types of things. Package management, this is kind of interesting. We're used to seeing all of this, but a couple of new things here is disable loading built-in packages. Now, I don't know why you'd want to do that. Um, uh, my only thought is that maybe you've made your own script that has nothing to do with built-in nodes and you don't want to load them by default. Okay. Uh, but this one I would, I might use a decent amount, which is disable loading custom packages. So I can say, oh, I don't want to like load the custom packages by default because I want to try and use what's in Dynamo out of the box first, because you know, everyone will have that. And if we look at the uh, package manager further, the installed packages, yes, of course we can, we can see what we have as far as install packages, but we can filter them, which is great. And we get these little tags uh, saying, oh, I have an error with this, or this one is loaded just fine, or this one's scheduled to update. Cool. We have seen that before, and that works currently, but uh, now that's readily available in the installed packages in the package manager. Cool. More interactive guides. You know, interactive guides are nice. Um, they're only as useful as they actually are, which is kind of a pointless thing to say because it's the obvious truth. But if you're able to use these things and they help you out, it's great. Like as a first time Dynamo user, they will, they will help, which is good. Uh, get, getting started with this interactive guide and then there's a packages interactive guide, really nice. And then workspace reference extension, which is, is now expanded, which, and by expanded, there's more information here. So we're used to seeing the packages, whether they're loaded and the like location and, and the version, but now we've got these local definitions, basically the, what I have open, what's going on here, uh, what all of these Dynamo files are open in my script. And then I have external files. Maybe I've loaded in or I'm referencing an Excel file in this case. I've got a couple, a JPEG image or a DLL file in the location, which is really good. It's kind of giving you a full broad spectrum of what's going on in your graph and you know, externally, which is really, really cool. Good to see that. All right, and then 2.13 part three. All right, now Forge unit nodes. Now, if you use Forge, this is great. You'll understand what this is. I don't use Forge. Uh, there's a lot that goes into Forge. It's all cloud stuff, but there's there's a lot of new specific unit nodes that are for Forge, which is great. I'm just gonna say that and move on. Obviously, there, here's some more. And then this one's very interesting. This is not necessarily something I knew about, um, but it's something that I've probably come across and maybe not even realized it. So we can see that we've got the, the, this old behavior, which is taking a thousand and it's converting this area from square feet to square meters and we're getting 93. And that's not exactly right because it just isn't. And we can see the new behavior, everything looks the same visually, but the result is actually precise. And that is correct, which is kind of interesting that it was default rounding. I, I don't know, why would it round up? Not sure by default. Um, we've got some uh, nodes reworked. 
this poly curve by group curve, which is new. That's great. So I can take this list of poly curves that includes all of these curves. What is that? Nine times four. That's 36, all these curves. And I can make a poly curve by all of these cur grouped curves. And in this case, I, I believe in the past, they, they all would have had to have been joined or at least connected together. Whereas now they can just kind of float out in space and I can, you can see I've got my nine poly curves. Cool. Easy. Like it. This one, poly curve by thickening curve normal. This is this has always been in Dynamo, but now they've introduced a normal, so you actually have more control over this particular node. Cool. And they've cleaned up the Python experience, basically saying you can look at the version. You see Python 3. Python 3 is like the latest and greatest. It's the best. And um, obviously, actually, the syntax and, and some of the features from Python 2 are would not work in Python 3s and therefore Python 3 is more updated and more universal so now this is good to see you can interact with that and you can even uh, put up a watch node to see what kind of information you're getting out of these Python scripts which is really helpful all right and just some basic stuff here <laughs> boosting design script with virtual machines cool may or may not care about this um, there was one that I passed making the search faster. My gosh, if you use Dynamo for, for more than five minutes, you know that searching is difficult. And look, 2.3 times as fast, um, and then 4.3 So they, you could see they, they've at least doubled some of these speeds when it comes to searching for nodes, which is the type of thing where I don't understand why it takes so long. Uh, obviously, there's a lot going on in the background that has to make that happen. So good to see that they've improved that. So we've looked at everything with 2.13, <laughs> but I want to look at 2.14 because this actually exists now as of April 25th, a few days ago. And obviously there's not a lot here, but this is really interesting. There are Dynamo zoom states. And by zoom states, it's like literally how far in or out are you zoomed in on the nodes? And you can see that if you look at some of these nodes, obviously I've got a hidden node or it's or the previous off. It's frozen, that type of thing. I've got warnings and I've got errors and I've got regular nodes working. So you can see here in this animation, as it zooms in and out, I get more information and those those full colors like, oh, error becomes just that bar at the bottom, which is really cool. It's, it's really small, but actually really helpful. It gives you an idea of what's going on. And then we've got some extended node help. And this is going to be really great for anyone new in Dynamo, even for myself, I will be honest. There's a lot of times where I need to find out what the heck a node does. And we can see that there's a specific help when it comes to all of these nodes. And I believe it's probably just the out-of-the-box nodes, of course. So, But look at this. It's giving you everything you need to see and even include an example file. These are things I imagine they've pulled from the Dynamo primer, uh, but it's just a hassle to have that open or go look somewhere else when you know you're working in this and you know what you need to know. <laughs> and then this is interesting too. I know groups are great and you should use them, but now we can actually style them in a certain way to have different colors and do different things, which is cool. And we can see a better example of that here. So I can say, hey, look, a group style, and I've, I have a ton of these group styles here, and I can change the group style depending on what it is. Inputs, outputs, these are great. Really good to see that kind of a thing. And then, of course, expanding. Uh, we have the additions and improvements. We can see where we were. Uh, with the warnings, we can learn more. We've looked at this already. And the visual refresh, obviously this is like, hello, we, I don't know why this is just now covered, but the function state specifically is what we want to look at. So if you don't have anything going through a particular node, you're going to get this function. Like it's just functioning there and it's not the right term to use right there, but um, it's just a function and it's serving no purpose because no data is going through it. So we see 2.12 and earlier, which is what we're used to seeing, but now 2.13 and beyond, we can see, yeah, we do still see function here. We do so do still see function here, but what else what what else can we use to inference that we're going to get this function without having to like expand this and see function? Well, we've got these this gray here. You you can see the gray here at the output, the gray here at the output, I'm getting function. Notice that the data that is successfully going through, not errored or anything, no warnings, I'm getting this group list output, which is it's there's no gray bar, there's nothing like that on the end which is really great. And we can see, obviously, with the red, there's no data coming in. Um, we do need data in that point. So that's really cool, really easy. It's small, but it will help you moving forward, which is really nice. And then node information state. Again, we've got the info, which is great. We can dismiss that there. Really nice. Um, that blue bar, which is really cool. Good to see that. 
and then this is really easy too. Uh, when it comes to groups, uh, it's kind of a pain to right click and make sure you have the group and the node selected and then add a group or ungroup or something like that. But now we can just simply hold alt and drag the nodes out of the group or into the group, which is awesome, really easy. It's the type of thing like I love to see it. So those are all the new updates. But uh, obviously, if we look at here, this is this was not created in 2.13 by any means. But we can see here we can there's a lot that we have to work with, and it's cool we hit see these errors and warnings. It's real obvious. It it's a lot more visually appealing. I it it looks like the nodes got kind of bulkier because of the updates and the icons, uh, mainly from the errors and whatnot. But or the warnings, but that's just the way it is. And I'd say. I like it a lot. Of course, we've got all of our different uh, colors and groups and the way that these look. It just, it's more visually appealing. It looks great. And then we can see our workspace references. Of course, these are all of the packages that I have in this script, um, none of which are installed for this version, that kind of a thing. No local de definitions, no external files that are referenced in here. Uh, but you can see this is fantastic. I really like this, and it's really nice to see. Now, finally, let's go to... Of course, we're in Dynamo, but I want to go ahead and open a new project. Actually, we don't even need to do that, but let's go ahead and go to Manage and then go to the Dynamo player. This is actually new, which is kind of cool. New as in uh, the Dynamo player was updated. Now, woo, there's a lot here. We don't want to see these necessarily, um, but this is obviously very different. So I'm looking at the Autodesk samples. I don't want to look at the Autodesk samples, so I'm going to go and look at my folder. And with my folder added, I can see I can now search. I can even open this in Explorer if I wanted to, you know, actually <laughs> look at all the scripts that I have there, which I don't care about. Um, but this is really great to see. We can view it as a list, or we can have a simplified list. I like the simplified bit list a lot. I can edit this in Dynamo. Which, these are all things we're used to seeing. Um, but what something I want to do, of course, I'm going to need to close Dynamo. It's going to bark at me if I don't do that. Is let's go ahead and create some new levels. Basically, run a script. So it's going to run. And you can see, this is really nice. There, there's a lot here. Of course, we've got all the inputs. And honestly, this is everything that's the same. Like, everything here you see is the same. Uh, I will say that some of the outputs look different, which is really great. Like, this is kind of more or less what we're used to seeing out of, you know, actual Dynamo. Like, if you were to run it. Um, let's, but let's go ahead and make a few levels here. Do 15, number of new levels. It, I can tell that these are out of order, <laughs> unfortunately. So there might be some renumbering, reorganizing of inputs uh, when it comes to working with existing scripts. That's just the kind of thing that you want to be aware of. So we've got our inputs, which is great. We can see the total difference between inputs and outputs, and we can just simply run it. And we can see that it's running. Yes, we got warnings, things like that. And my guess is because it's not looking at packages. So really great. Good to see this stuff. Obviously, we have more display preferences here. We can show graph properties, which I don't know why we would well, not want to see that, but we can have a specific author. Um, we would probably want to keep node descriptions. And look, sort nodes alphabetically. I don't want to do that. And if you <laughs> uncheck that, everything's in order. That's just the way it is. So uh, things to be aware of, I guess. And then, of course, we can open the file location, which we've seen, and then edit in Dynamo, which, of course, we've already seen. So it's nice. It, it works a little bit better. It's updated. It feels a little more uh, fluid as opposed to you know, seemingly clunky version. It looks kind of more like what you would see in Dynamo, which is really helpful. So... That will do it for this video. We looked at all the new Dynamo updates in Revit 2013, which included Dynamo 2.13 and soon to be 2.14, which is technically out now. So do check those out. Definitely look for a lot more Dynamo videos coming up, especially with this new version, which is awesome. I enjoy it visually, uh, mainly for the visuals for sure. But if you happen to learn something, please, please demolish that like button. It really, really helps. And I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day, and thank you very, very much for watching.